Question number one, should you be worried about this? Well, seismologists say not really. They're small, but these quake zones are capable of magnitude 7 plus earthquakes close to the surface, and that fact is sobering. The first quake cluster struck Saturday morning north of Fall City, a 2.3 followed by a 3.2, and people felt it. The house was rattling, and I thought, okay, here we go. The area around Fall City is interesting, and that's where three fault zones come together. The Seattle Fault running east and west, generally along I-90, the South Whidbey Island Fault Zone coming in from the northwest, and the Rattlesnake Mountain Fault Zone heading southeast. And it was in these fault zones, as mapped by the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, where there was a 2.6 above Carnation on Wednesday morning, and then just before midnight, a 2.2 on South Camano Island. Both could be felt. Throw in even smaller ones, nine quakes in all. As human beings, we're really good at seeing patterns. Paul Bowden manages the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. Is it a change from normal behavior? And that's the key, that's the, I think the key notion. Is what we're seeing unexpected based on what we've seen in the past? Bowden says don't read too much into these quakes. Every year there are thousands of quakes in western Washington. And as this fault zone map illustrates, there are plenty of cracks under our feet and plenty of reasons for things to go pop. Each pop, another reminder, we all need to be prepared. These earthquakes aren't telling us a larger earthquake is on the way. There have been 31 earthquakes in Washington and Oregon since last Friday. That's the area that is surveyed by the PNSN. 25 of them have been in Washington, and that is another reason why we are the second most active earthquake state after That's California. That's a lot of earthquakes. That's a lot of earthquakes. Wow. So Glenn, a lot of people are wondering what are scientists doing to find these faults? They've been doing a lot. So every time they get one of these, they it's sort of like a flashbulb going off in a dark room. You know, it's like, okay, you can remember, you can see that. So the, mm -hmm. the all the instrumentation picks up stuff. That goes into a database. That helps form these pictures. You can see their fault zone. So we talk about the Seattle fault quite a bit is like one line, mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm. San Andreas. It's actually at the surface, it's a lot. They also do trenching. They will cut across where they think these faults are to confirm where they go underground. They can't see them deep underground. But you can look at LIDAR, you can look at just the way the geology uh, looks from the surface, and you can tell probably a fault right there. Hmm. It's fascinating. So, and there's more and more news that always comes out of these. We'll keep paying close attention yes, we for will. you. Thanks, Glenn.